What is becoming more and more clear, if it has to become more clear, I'll say it's becoming more and more clear to me is what I'm going to call this video is the great unraveling is proceeding rapidly, I would say, rapidly. Not the great reset. Maybe I'll put the great reset question marks and oppose it to the great unraveling, which is a much more appropriate term for what I believe is going on right now. And it's escalating quickly. And who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Canada, eh? As Jimmy Dore likes to say, Canada, eh? Whenever he says Canada, he says Canada, eh? Yeah, who would have thunk it? That this great unraveling is originating in a country that is considered by the rest of the world to be such a nice, congenial bunch of people, which it is, which actually in, in, the, in the sense of the population, this is 100% true. People are uh, referred, Canadians are referred to as super respectful in the world and they, they tend to say, I'm sorry. And, and even when they haven't done anything, geez, I'm sorry. Uh, for those of you who don't understand the true history of Canada, what it is based on, it is, it is sitting on the murdered bodies of children, Aboriginal children, documented 100% the Aboriginal genocide. In fact, the genocide that occurred uh, to in, in the conquering of, of, of the American continent, South and North, North America, the uh, entire country sits on a genocide of the, its Aboriginal peoples. And Canada is no different. So Canada the good may be good in terms of individuals, but in terms of its history, the government, the government, the churches, the government are responsible for atrocious atrocities committed against its Aboriginal, against the native community. So this is something that in my estimation, a country based on this kind of a history is going to have a very difficult time unless it comes to term with its terms with its history that it will unravel it will come apart at the seams and what we're seeing now i relate to the 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 superficial attempts that have been presented to us in the public domain about apologies and all of this are actually quite duplicitous. I, I never really believed Trudeau was putting himself forward, this is the Prime Minister in Canada, as taking the lead on apologizing and he made some vain statements, contrite statements, and nothing really changed in the Native community. And it's a complex issue now because for the most part I believe that the Native community has been so decimated and has been bought off in a combination of past history and present being bought off that it's very difficult for this group of people to, to literally function with integrity. They are so split amongst themselves and have infiltrators that the governments, uh, there's every government, conservative, liberal, whatever they were, have infiltrated this community. And it's very hard for this community to actually assert itself. It's making an effort, but it's very difficult because the fundamental rot is still there. The fundamental rot being that apologies are not mean nothing. It's a do as I say, not as I do kind of philosophy here that the government of Canada has adopted. They say one thing and do another thing. For example, a lot of the um, native communities for, for decades, for decades have no clean drinking water. Oh, we don't have the funds to, uh, they, they have the funds for everything else on earth, but not to create a healthy environment, just physical environment for the native community. It is the genocide on a certain level, as far as I can understand here, is still going on and no apology 
will set right the wrong without the deeds. And what I'm coming to today, what I'm thinking, this is a, I'm, it's a little bit of an aside, but it, it is very apropos to what is going on in Canada right now, in my estimation, the lack of true remorse and sadness at the behavior of our grandfathers and great, great grandfathers and the people right up until 1990, I think 1996, uh, the residential schools, as they were called, were not closed down until 1996. The atrocities against the community, the Aboriginal community, was still being perpetrated in schools called residential schools until 1996 or 1992 at least, I'm sure. So how, how does a country expect to exist on the corpses of these innocent people pretend that it's carrying forward and all the leaders jump on board with their proclamations and their mantras. I'm even not concerned about the last two years of this shit show, this COVID shit show that is just a preamble for the Klaus Schwab types, as everyone knows who listens on the, on the net. Canada is being used as an example to create the great reset phenomena, all this. Well, it's not the great reset people, it's the great unraveling. And the great unraveling is that the, the, the children, the corpses, the murdered children are screaming out and they're not gonna let this happen. This is my opinion. This is how I see the history of Canada now being shaped. And the people that are protesting, the courageous people that are protesting the conditions that we're facing. You see, if you abuse one segment of the population, you don't have a problem abusing anybody. This is how it works. This government has not honestly come forward with such regret and wanting to make things right that it's just being transferred now to the rest of the population. And don't believe yourself to be secure in a country that has laws. As we see, laws can be, as, as, as soon as a law is created, it can be thrown out. It can be completely ignored the way this prime minister, who I believe is quite psychotic, and this is why the World Economic Forum and all these types that run the show from the back room, I've said, we don't really know who the uh, people are. Schwab is not the one. There are other people involved in running the show on the front, on the surface, we don't know who they are. And, but the point is, in terms of the unraveling, I believe that Canadians are outside of this group who commit, who continue to commit these atrocities against the entire population. The Canadian fundamental spirit is one of goodness and caring as we see with these protests. And anyone even suggesting that it's a bunch of hooey, like Owen Benjamin, who laughs at the truckers, he's making fun. He's saying, oh, you just opened a door to the bullshit. Au contraire, OB, Owen Benjamin, you hack, and all you hacks that are attaching yourselves to his, his narcissistic bear community, I, I shouldn't even bring them up, but I can't think of the other ones that are out there that are pretending to know what's really going on in Canada. They're sitting in the middle of nowhere in Idaho. He is a Hollywood, a Hollywood graduate. Yeah, we're really going to believe the Hollywood graduates in terms of their assessment of the meaning of the universe. And never mind our own backyard here. Canadians have shown themselves now to emerge, to emerge like a butterfly out of a cocoon. That's how I see this protest movement like a butterfly out of a cocoon. The cocoon of the atrocities committed, this country is gonna set it right. This is what I believe the unraveling is, is having identified a very important issue. You can call it freedom. I think freedom is highly overstated in this because nobody can grant you freedom. You're free. You and I are free, but in essence. So nobody grants me freedom or anything. So the freedom shout is a bit, of a diversion. I find this, you know, this freedom thing is a diversion, but I understand the screams for freedom means stop oppressing. I think that is a much more clear assertion. 
stop the oppression, not give me freedom. I am free, but I refuse to be oppressed. I refuse to comply. So my point, the unraveling, Canada, Canada of all places, I'm so proud to be a Canadian. I'm so proud to align myself with the people of conscience that have come forward and said enough is enough. The atrocities will end here. Even though we have these hyenas and reptiles in public office who refuse to take the stand along with the population. And I'm, I'm not even, the, the, the way I look at the people that are saying, oh no, you bastards, you anti-vax conspiracy guys, all this kind of stuff, it's, it's not relevant to me. Their opinion doesn't mean anything because they're just regurgitations. They've been told to regurgitate the mantras. They're not thinking for themselves. And as such, they're not really, uh, they don't have any soul in their body. They're not representing what a human being could actually be. The highest part in a human being is to do the right thing, to act one's conscience. What they're doing is they're just repeating the mantras by the hyenas and reptiles that are running the place like they have for hundreds of years, thousands of years. These are remnants. These are, these are the dinosaurs that are still sitting in their chairs pretending to have any kind of influence and power. All they can do is wield a big sword and a sledgehammer on us. This is what they think, but it doesn't work. The history of this country, this country is sunk unless it does the right thing on one of the greatest crimes committed against the people that were here when honky white guy came in and just went through the china shop and cut off all the heads so this has to be set right and the reason it's unraveling now is because people are realizing we got to do the right thing now this may not be at the at the frontal lobe part of people's thought process but what i am what i'm observing i i feel so hopeful and uh as much as it's it's extremely difficult to watch the measures that are being attempted to be implemented and the whole kind of <clears throat> stuff about all oh, the law enforcement thing are gonna fight all those uh, conspiracy terrorist types that are in trucks and on the street. Well, there may be some progress that they may have for a while, but the thing is unraveling. And it's unraveling because this country and the people in it that matter have decided the wrongs have to stop now. And this is a fabulous development for all people of conscience and even people that haven't got a clue, they're gonna be swept along in this wave and things will be set right. I, I predict, I say, that what will come out of this over the next months or years will be a fundamental shift in attitude toward the people the Aboriginal community in this country, all the sort of mantras about, oh, we care about you and we're on the ceded lands of these people and that, that's all a bunch of mantra hooey. And the natives, the natives know this too. And they've been co-opted and seduced by so many of the, 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 the little gimmies that you get, but this is over. This protest is showing that people have now decided in Canada and hopefully in the rest of the world, the circumstances may be somewhat different, but in Canada, what I'm saying is the abuses and the injustice that has occurred over the last 200 years is going to be set right by this event. This COVID shit show has set this off. They've bitten off too much. The owners have taken too much in their, in their fantasies of a reset towards whatever you people can speculate on what this reset may or may not be. I'm saying it's an unraveling. It's not a reset. And it's a Canada is appropriate from the point of view. It doesn't hold the monopoly on abuses. Other countries in, uh, well, in the US as well, uh, the native community, it was no different from the native community here and how they were affected and how they still are affected how they've been fundamentally 
the soul has been sucked out of them by a vicious group of people that came in and no matter how you stand in terms of, well, it's the uh, survival of the fittest. Well, if that's the world you live in, I feel sorry for you. The survival of the fittest. If you are feeling part of a jungle, that you're a beast in a jungle, I feel sorry for you because that's not how the true human being, as far as I feel in myself, actually works. The true human being wants to do the right thing, not just for themselves, but for everyone around them. It's called a conscience. So uh, I, I think I'll end it here. I, I think I said what I wanted to say. There's so much more to go into the details of this unraveling and the inspirational people that are out there in a grassroots way will not be denied. I feel the power in this. I am now sensing, I wasn't quite sure, and that the trucker um, symbol is exactly that. It is a symbol and it took a group of people that drive big heavy trucks to find, to get, to get people aware, those who still have this quality in them, don't know how many, maybe it's 20%, 30, 40% even, and the ones that aren't on board are not thinking for themselves. They're taking the mantras from the reptiles that are running the show. That's what's happening. And you can't, listen, listen this is the other thing about facts. I was talking to a friend and they said, you know, the facts don't seem to matter. And I said, I made a video about this a, a, quite a while ago already. And I said, the reason the facts don't matter to people, the people that you're upset with, for example, who say, well, you can present all the scientific evidence that uh, all this stuff is a bunch of hooey, it doesn't work. The reason those facts don't matter and science has just gone over the deep end, totally unhinged around this COVID shit show, is because people already know. People already know the truth and a lie. People know innately, unless you're a psychopath, and even a psychopath probably understands and knows the fact from fiction, the truth from a lie. People all know, but it's a conviction, the, what is called a belief towards something for whatever reason, whether it's fear or coercion or seduction, that is in place. And facts will never alter anyone until you're ready. And a person is ready when they open themselves to possibility. I've, I've said, I love the idea. It comes out of the Song of Songs, uh, translated properly. My peace is uncertainty. As we embrace this feeling within us that not everything has to be nailed down, we, we, have, we have the tolerance, we have the patience to live with uncertainty, which is an, a phenomenal gift in a human being. Not to be uh, irritated by something that is just a little off and you, you can't take it, like your breakfast isn't there at eight o'clock in the morning, it comes at nine and you go funny in the head and all that kind of thing. The things, the habitual things we're used to. If we have tolerances, we can live with this uncertainty. It's all right, it's okay. So what is, what is now unfolding and unraveling is a complex set of circumstances. And the reason it's Canada, I'm convinced about this. The reason is it's Canada is because people have understood within themselves what it means to do the right thing as a Canadian. And the idea of, of following the reptiles who have decimated a huge portion of the Aboriginal community, which is a shell, which is just basically a shell right now. But it, I hope it can be revived. That spirit in that, in that community can be revived. I have seen evidence that it is alive still to the extent that I understand. Uh, I might understand a, a native uh, Aboriginal person. I find this to be so hopeful and it's not a reset, it's an unraveling. And the unraveling, wherever this may go, it can't get any worse as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, we could be thrown into concentration camps and stuff, but it can't get any worse from... No, I, I'm saying this seriously, that there could be a, a, a kind of power-hungry response in these, in these 
I don't know what kind of a human being is still behind those uh, black outfits that, you know, they call them police, but they look like an army ready to invade another country, not to a police, uh, you know, an unruly bunch of people population. This is, this is something else. I don't know the degree and the level of, of depravity that we may still have to face, but the fundamental, the fundamental line has been drawn. Canada has a group called the line. This line has been drawn now, and I believe people of conscience have stepped forward and said, no more of this, we're going to make things right. And Canada, of all places, is where it started. Magnificent. The great unraveling.